Hello and welcome. In this video, we're looking at Aptera's Gamma release and the changes that have been made since Alpha and Beta. A quick shout out for Aptera Owners Club, who have kindly allowed me to use some of their footage from the Gamma release. If you would like to reserve an Aptera, please use the link below. That will save you $30 on the reservation fee, which is totally refundable. So we're now one stage away from production vehicle, and I've scoured the internet and collected as much information as I could find on Gamma and the changes that have been made since the previous test vehicles. So in no particular order, here are the changes both big and small that look like they're going to make it into the production vehicle. And at the end, there'll be the rumor mill, which will cover a lot of the information and speculation regarding Aptera that has been released in the past couple of weeks, but as yet has not been 100% confirmed. So first up is the PV cell count. This has gone back and forth over the past couple of months. In the Ghana concept render that was previously released, we had eight additional solar cells, adding about 12% extra power to the Aptera. Now the share ROMs have been removed on the rear, presumably to reduce construction complexity, and so we are now down to just two additional cells, giving us around 3% additional PV power over the Alpha design. The PV cells in Gamma are also fully functional. No official data on how well they perform was released, but all the employees at the reveal show seemed more than happy with the performance, which is a very good sign. And it was nice to see that they blended very well with the rest of the body. In fact, they're really quite beautiful. The battery pack sizes were also announced. The 250 mile version will have a 23 kilowatt hour battery. The 400 mile version will have a 45 kilowatt hour battery with 41 kilowatt hours of usable energy. The 600 mile version will have a 66 kilowatt hour battery and the 1000 mile version will have a 99 kilowatt hour battery. As many people have guessed, the 250 mile version will be the most efficient because it's the lightest and therefore requires a smaller battery pack size compared to the others. The 400 mile version has the 45 kilowatt hour pack with about 9% of the energy held in reserve to extend the life of the battery. Interestingly, the 600 mile version has a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will presumably also include this 9 to 10% reserve for the battery, but the 1000 mile version only has a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack. This could mean that they ran out of space for a 110 kilowatt hour pack, or it could simply be a mass production factor, meaning that they didn't want to produce too many battery type variants in order to keep the cost down. Either way, I'm assuming that the promised 1000 mile range is still achievable under the EPA standard. There are lots of vents on the Aptera. Some of the vents are around the edge of the main screen. This seems to be purely a design decision to keep the interior in a very minimalist design style. There are also front and side defrost vents for the windows and windshield, as well as ventilation in both footwells. Trunk knock was new. We've seen the knock system in prototype before for the main doors, but what we haven't seen before was it being used for the trunk system as well. But this makes perfect sense and seems like a very easy system to use, providing it's reliable. New pedals. The pedals shown in the Gamma version were upcycled from skateboard decks made from maple. Now the rumour is that these won't make it to the final production, but we will see something that looks very similar because everything in the Gamma design is design intent, and so this is how the final vehicle is intended to look. The controversial yoke is still there. I love the yoke. A lot of people don't like the yoke. And from all the reviews we've seen of it, it looks like it's very comfortable to use. The yoke has two programmable buttons. How exactly these will function is a little unclear still, but it looks like you can program them to do any particular function you want. There is a windshield wiper. The current one on the camera is made out of metal, but the production intent version should be made out of carbon fiber to keep the weight down even further. The glowing Aptera logo on the side of the Aptera is currently backlit with RGB light. This is intended to show the charging progress and communicate to the owner what exactly is happening from the outside. But the RGB version may not make it to final production. What we do know is that it will probably be a white glowing logo. The position of the central rear stoplight has been confirmed above the window of the rear. There are other stoplights integrated into the other light panels on both sides of the rear. A surprise for some was that the Aptera now has actual mirrors. For those of you who don't know, Aptera has been fighting to get the necessity of wing mirrors removed and replaced purely with cameras for aerodynamic reasons. So far they've been unsuccessful and up until now they just simply had a strip of reflective material that covered the legal requirements. But now it looks like they've decided to go with real mirrors. On the plus side, the mirrors have been designed to be removed easily by the users, which does pose the interesting question of how many users will intend to keep these mirrors on after they've received their vehicle. The ground clearance of the Aptera Gamma was surprisingly low, about three and a half inches above the ground or 90 millimeters. The reason for this is pure aerodynamics. There's a big aerodynamic penalty for going higher than this. For some people, this height may cause problems, but that remains to be seen if they make it a little bit higher or not. The knob on the back of the Aptera is apparently not a tow bar, but a reverse indicator 
and also doubles as lighting for the license plate and the charge port. Two rear view cameras were also confirmed for the Aptera. One is a standard camera replacing the rear view mirror and the second is a fisheye for parking and the transition will be automatic with the parking view appearing on the main dashboard screen, meaning that you will have two cameras at the same time to help you park. Speaking of parking, the parking sensors were seen positioned on the wheel pans. Bluetooth and USB charging were both confirmed and the speakers in the dash and the side panels were also confirmed. The body shape has also changed slightly. This was touched on previously and the belly of the Aptera has now lowered a little bit, presumably to help them fit in a battery, but also perhaps to help them fit in a third seat. Most of the materials we saw inside the Aptera were production intent, the exception being the pineapple leather. This did not meet their quality standards and so this is going to be removed, but they will replace it with something that looks very similar, but of a higher quality. The grey areas at the front and rear of the wheel pans are made from a hard foam that is designed to degrade over time. The designers at Aptera realised that this was going to be a contact point for some people and so they have integrated this into their design plans to make these parts easily removable as these parts of the Aptera are the most likely parts that are going to get damaged. The Tesla charging port was also confirmed as production intent for the Aptera. This has caused some confusion in the past. If Aptera was released tomorrow, it would not be able to use the Tesla charging network because the Tesla charging network is purely for Tesla vehicles. But the Tesla charging port is by far the most reliable and best designed charging port on the market. The biggest news for me was the confirmation that Aptera is working on bi-directional charging, otherwise known as V2G or vehicle to grid charging. Just like the Sonos Eon and the Tesla, Aptera is looking to add this incredible feature. Why is it so cool? Why do I love this feature so much? Quite simply because it means I may never have to import electricity from the grid again. I can use excess solar from my house to fill my Aptera to 100% on sunny days and then take it back on darker days, meaning I do not have to buy an extra house battery and I can always use the cheapest possible electricity. Also confirmed at the Gamma event is that Aptera is still on track for production at the end of 2022, which is great news. Now I've moved these points to what I'm calling the rumor mill because they're not 100% confirmed. So the first point is the upgradable solar kit. Chris Anthony did clearly say that they are working on an additional one kilowatt rollout solar solution for the Aptera. What we do know is the MPPT tracker inside the Aptera has been rated to 1,700 watts, which would cover this additional 1,000 watts of external power. This does bring slightly into question how many trackers the Aptera has. I'm hoping it has at least four trackers already for the different solar surfaces, but it is perfectly possible that it has just one. The second rumour is the third seat. There was a surprise announcement by Chris Anthony that the 250 mile version of the Aptera, the base version of the Aptera, will come with an optional third seat. The reason I say this is a rumour and not production intent at the moment is because at the moment they're focusing on the 400 mile version that will be released first and not the 250 mile version, so they haven't actually started developing this seat area as far as we know. On top of that, none of the other workers seem to know anything about this third seat apart from the speculation that we've heard. And the last point in the rumour mill is the Aptera Robo Taxi, which is something in the far off future, I would imagine. Judging by how many other companies have struggled with automated driving, I wouldn't hold your breath for this feature. As cool as it sounds, I think this is many years off. So that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe. If you think I missed any points, please leave a comment down below and I will try to address them. If you would like to reserve an Aptera, please use the link below. That will save you $30 on the reservation fee, which is totally refundable. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.